So today I'm here at Cheshire Malayal Golf Club, which is the course that I grew up on and I learnt my learnt my game on. Um, it's it's not a very long course, but it's very very tight. Um, it's been here for well over a hundred years in the Buckinghamshire countryside. This is obviously away from my golf simulator and the stuff I do in my simulator videos. It's something I've wanted to do. I'd like to share with anyone that wants to watch. Be a nice little stroll around the English countryside on a very, very nice autumn day. Hole number one, May Tree. 253 yards, the most long hit as they can green this, but there's a lot of trouble either side. So maybe a nice medium iron, flick on, nice easy fall. This is actually a hole that can get you off to a good start for a nice easy birdie. Potential eagle as well, if you crack one off the tee good enough. But there is danger that looms around everywhere, especially being your first hole as well. You could start off to a really easy double on this hole. And there's no gimmies anywhere else in the course. So the thing with Cheshire Malayal Golf Club, it is a true risk and reward. If you've got a big set of kahunas and you can hit the ball straight and reasonably long, you can do quite well. To the first and the tenth, small green, as I said, two bunkers. Either side, fairly flat. Not too much of a challenge putting wise. Pretty tough pin placement today to be on a trap. Right, so we're off the first green, slash tenth green. We head down to the second and the eleventh. Probably about a, I don't know, 150 yard walk maybe down to the tee. People have left their golf clubs here when they've been a bit lazy. Um, and I have heard the cars drive along this road in the past and someone's jumped out and swiped a bag of clubs to get a nice wallet, set of car keys. Probably lobbed the clubs halfway down the road and they got you know, wallet full of money or whatever. But anyway, Tishmalayo Cricket Club. Probably one of the smallest boundaries in cricket, but that's a really beautiful country village scene over there. Clubhouse. And then what we've got over here is two pubs just on that, just see through the trees here, just these two. I think this one here, the Swan, is maybe 300 years old. And it used to be, here's the crown, the crown's on this side. So, some good stories actually of the Swan movie stars Clark Gable and James Stewart used to go in there for a drink when they were stationed at Wovingdon Airfield which is up the road and has also been turned into a movie studios. Alright so 2nd and 11th 398 yards this is stroke 4 and 1 the original one par 4 longest on the course. Considering we are until, although I said the weather had had a miraculous bit of temperature in it for this time of year, the fairways are looking really good for autumn. All right, so we're now coming up to the 150 yard pole. So to get here, you'd have had to smacked it about 248 yards. I'm not sure what that is in meters, maybe 220. to about here, which is gonna leave you a fairly straightforward, fairly straightforward shot into the green. Again, however, everything closes in, it kind of goes down to a funnel. So second and the 11th green. Not a large green at all. And this is where, if you miss the green, this is where most of the balls seem to end up. Down and round here, around these little hillocks here. And you've got a little pitch to play onto the green. Right, we're off to the signature hole now. Third and the twelfth. Now this hole is very, very 
visually appealing. It's not a long hole. It's a hole that you've just got to get your tee shot right, otherwise you're in a world of pain. Um, good little stories from back in the day. The club used to hold the BB&O side of here, which was the Berkshire, Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire County side. They used to come and play and our club used to put out their single figure markers and we'd go and we'd have, I think it was four, four balls in the morning and then we'd have singles in the afternoon. Um, current Ryder Cup captain Luke Donald has played here. I played in the match where he was here and he came here as a 12 year old. Anyway, Luke Donald played here. But what they used to do in this hole was after the game, the guys used to have to dress up in shirt and ties and collars with a jacket on all that sort of stuff and then they'd come out here and they would have to use um they'd have to use a driver on this hole it's literally 120 yards from the back 117 from the back so as you can see you're playing down to that green down there from this tee so there was all these really good young golfers all standing on this tee jacket and tie Jackets are all done up, hitting drivers onto this green. So it was just a little bit of fun at the end of the day. Um, and I used to love it. We used to have a bit of fun with it all. Unfortunately, that sort of all disappeared over the years. But that's just a little bit of history from this hole. So anyway, this is the Dell. This is the third hole, par three. It's quite a benign day today. Sun's out, a little bit of breeze. But I can tell you, when you're playing from, let's say, this side of the tee, so I'm in the middle of where the tees are situated now. Can't even see the pin. If this is wind in your face or wind right to left, left to right, you're in all sorts of trouble. And it's even a lot of fun here in winter time when the greens were frozen. And you're trying to land your ball down onto that green there. As you can see, there's rubbish everywhere. This stuff's all actually been cleared out in the last few years. This all used to be rough, but you couldn't even see anything. But down there's the green. Right, so just, this is the, the 12th, the 12th hole. This is 113 yards. Also called the Dell. So coming in from this side, as opposed to the third, the green is long and skinny. Whereas from the other side, you're playing it to more of a diagonal. This is a nightmare of a hole. There it is down there. It should be easy, <laughs> but it really isn't. Okay, so this is the, uh, the green. So we teed off from up there. That was 12, threes over there. And this green does have quite a few undulations on it. And that is a very, very tough pin placement. My God, right on the edge of the green in between two dips. Um, but what a spectacular hole, a beautiful hole of golf. Anyone coming here for the first time will absolutely remember this. And I was on the card about 15 years I reckon I was on the on the actual uh, the picture of the card and I was <laughs> this th these bushes over here had grown out and I was coming out of uh, I was coming out of here I must have smashed one in here in this little dip down here and I was chipping out onto the green I had another mate of mine Simon that was on the green and there was a bag that was here somewhere and uh, got no idea who that was but yeah that was quite cool to be on the, the cover of the card this course it's not very long when you look at the cards and you look at the overall distance of it. It's really not very long at all. However, to become a low handicap round here, you've got to know how to play the par threes well. I think the lowest I've ever heard around here is three, three handicap. And I have to say, for anyone to get lower than that, they gotta be scoring a lot of birdies on the par fours because the par threes are ridiculously hard. This is the fourth tee. 210 yards. Schoolhouse Hill. Over there, I believe, was an old schoolhouse, hence the name, Schoolhouse Hill. Very, very decent hit to get up here. A little bit of wind behind today, which would make it a little bit easier. But... So this is the 13th. And in my opinion, by far and away, one of the hardest par threes I've ever played. 244 yards uphill also called the schoolhouse the same as the uh as the as the fourth playing to the same green but we've come back what another 30 yards into the trees all right it's coming up to the fourth 
and 13th green. Over there is the uh, second and the 11th. Back at the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. I stood here with mum and me dad. I was over for a trip and they had all fireworks going off down, down the fairway down there. All the other throngs of people on the other side of the fireworks. There was about three people standing this side. So we got a fantastic view of the fireworks going off there that night. A couple of greenside bunkers, lovely flat green that goes slopes from back to front. Fairly generous pin placement today, just at the back of the green. And that's it, that's the uh, the green for these two delightful, very difficult par threes. The tees for the fifth and 14. Okay, tee shot from the fifth. Just looked at the score, the yardage. 354 yards. Ideal shot is out here somewhere. Nice little baby draw into the middle of the fairway. Maybe just at that big tree there, put it back in. Hopefully you're gonna be hitting something like a, a nine iron into the green, but it's still a decent, decent tee shot with not much margin of error. This, without doubt, is one of the toughest tee shots around. Um, this is the 14th, 374, bluebell bottom. I'll show you where the bluebells come out. So anyway, this is the T, and that's what you're faced with. You're literally rubbish all the way down this hole. There's no bailout, there's no anything. You've got to commit to the shot, get it away. This really is an absolutely magnificent golf hole. You play this one properly, you hit a great drive, and you can get one to stick to, stick to the green. A couple of putts, you will be very, very happy with yourself because there's so much trouble down either side here. So you've striped one off the tee. This is where you're going to be landing, and this is where, and what you're gonna be facing for your second shot into these greens. The 5th and the 14th, you will be around about here somewhere. I think this is probably about 120 yards, maybe in. Coming onto the green now. Very, very small putting surface. I think over the years it's probably got a little bit smaller as well. A couple of holes, there's a little bit of a walk between green and T. So this is 5 and 14, walk into 6 and 15 T. So <clears throat> a little bit uphill. I think the green, the green stuff done a very good job on all the non-playing areas of the course. Over the last couple of years, they've really uh, put a lot of hard work in. I suppose you only really notice it when you, uh, when you haven't been here for a while. So this is the tee for the 6th and the 15th. Goes this way, dog legs slightly to the right there. Called the birches, and the birches are all these trees over here, which if you hit one straight and long, got very, very, very difficult shot over the top of that, playing against the grain of the rough on the 9th and the 18th. So the idea is to try and hit a nice little fading tee shot here, you take it on with a driver or you can hit something like a long iron or three wood or whatever. Um, all down the right hand side down here is all out of bounds. But coming into where your, hopefully your tee shot has landed on six and 15. So really, anything around here is gonna leave a fairly straightforward little pitch into the green. This is probably about, oh, about 110, 100, 100 in. Bunkers either side, fairly flat green. You would not want to be taking that pin on at any time unless you're playing with a very soft ball and you know how to nip it. So it's just sitting behind a bunker there, tough shot. Um, what I said off the tee was that if you hit a long straight one and you don't get the necessary fade, 
or the little bit of cut that you need, you're kind of faced with this shot. Now, the rough here, the grain is all going this way. So you could be facing that shot there, which against the grain, getting it up over that birch and to get it to sit down, is no mean feat. Most decent long hitters are going to be in line with this bush here and you're going to be faced with a pretty straightforward maybe 70 yard pitching um, again another chance for a birdie all right so this is 7 and 16 tee shot it's called high oak i'll show you where the oak is it's 301 yards again on paper not a very long hole but I think from here on inwards, from 16, 17 and 18 is when your arsehole starts to pucker up a little bit because these trees start to close in even more and the tee shot becomes even more important. So faced with as a tee shot. All right, so as we come up to this bit up here, there's a big open area just here. Back in the 60s, I think, I'd have to double check that, 60s, 70s maybe. This actually used to be a par three, this big area in front of this big tree here. And here, this used to be a par three. If you do get a nice scooty draw one, you can actually get it either through those trees there or slightly to the right and it'll draw around. Green is through here. Through this, you can't even see the pin. Pin's actually around to the side here. But this is, this is the safe area here. And you've then got to negotiate these two tall trees here to get to the pin. You've got to lob it over that tree and try and get it to stop down and then maybe just trickle onto the front of the green. Generally where I find myself over here, or <laughs> or in there when I don't get any draw on it and it goes straight into the bushes. But if you hit it to this position, you're just to the side of the oaks, the shot into the green is quite straightforward, guided by two bunkers on the left and the right. All right, coming down to the green, right hand side bunker, left hand side. Behind that there is, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 yards of rough and then it goes into very, very deep rough on the, on the other side. But I think you've got to have really skinnied one or really made a serious error of judgment in the club to get into that lot over there. Right, on our way through to the uh, 8th and 17th now. And you've got to step up to the back tee on this one. <laughs> the trees will start to close in. <laughs> Everything looks a little bit tighter than it did before. All right, tee shot for the 17th and the 8th. 344 yards. It's called Woodpeckers, which is the uh, emblem of the of Cheshire Malay Golf Club. Very, very tight. As you can see the trees here, you've got to try and navigate those two. And you've also got to try and get one away of a reasonable distance. So if you've got a good one away, this here is 200 yards, 150 in, 50, mark it into the green. There were two bunkers here, which have now been turned into grass bunkers. Um, there's a dell over there. So hitting it around about the two, 220, 230 mark into that kind of area there. Um, and down the dip here, it all, it all actually uh, narrows up a little bit. So the longer you hit it, um, the narrower the, uh, the area you're trying to hit it into. But as you can see, all around the back of it and to the sides of it is just jungle country. You miss this landing area or the green. Um, you're not finding balls. You're not gonna find anything in there. Anything goes in there, forget about it. You call it a search party. It all looks easy, but you've actually got to do it. And if you don't do it, you'll be dropping another ball. Uh, looking back up the fairway, what a beautiful view. Stunning, stunning English. English countryside at its absolute finest. One green side, and the green side bunker there. Probably one of the bigger greens at Layhill, this one, I suppose in some area. Very, very interesting pin placement, I might add. It's literally about a couple of metres on the edge of the green. Unbelievable. On to the 9th and the 18th. This is, in my opinion, a very, very interesting tee shot. If you play with a fade or a hook, I should say fade, slice is even worse. <laughs> hook you've got a little bit of a bailout actually and I'll show you in a second but if you play with a fade and a slice off the back tees I don't fancy your chances much 
it's a bit of a pisser really when you've just gone all the way around the golf course and you've got to face this as your last hole. This is the tee shot for the 9th and the 18th called Willow Sound. The reason for the name is as I showed when we were walking on the 2nd and the 11th that is the other side of the cricket pitch so on, a, uh, on any given Saturday or Sunday you can hear the magnificent sound of the willow cricket ball smashing against the willow and being knocked to one of the boundaries so anyway this tee shot here so as you can see you're playing with any sort of cut fade you've got to avoid these trees so if you're hitting it straight there's trees all the way down the right hand side so invariably you will be in the trees at some point whether you hit these ones or whether you're going to be in them ones you're going to be in the trees because there's literally no way of playing this shot without it unless you literally nip it through here and it just kind of cuts back and you manage to find yourself a bit of fairway on the other hand if you're playing a draw you're hitting it around here and you can basically take it out to the sixth the rough on the sixth sixth and fifteenth to play into the green but this this gap between these trees and being summer as well it looks even narrower that gap between the trees out there is so tight there's hardly any room you've got to hit, actually you have to hit it straight 84 I joined here and as a junior I think it cost me about 25 quid I think for the year and me and my friend John Sharp we spent it literally felt like every waking hour I spent up this golf course and I've got a couple of kids of my own now and just like any other kid of this generation it's all on the phones and video games I spent my whole life up this golf club out in the fresh air getting exercise and I think the best part of it all when I look back was the interaction with so many different people this golf club had doctors, it had accountants, it had builders, it had dentists, it had all sorts, tradesmen, business owners, and there's me, 15, 16, hanging out with these guys, communicating with them. 9th and 18th, you made it. And it looks like these have just been aerated, or this one has at least anyway, just coming into that autumn period. So that's that. Cheshire Malayo Golf Club. Fantastic little golf course. So that was it. I hope everyone enjoyed my little stroll down memory lane around an absolutely fabulous 9 old golf course, Cheshire Malay Hill Golf Club. I dedicate this to my dad. He passed away back in March. He was a member here for 40 years and absolutely loved this joint. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.